Next tonight, a question mark over the future of the Oxford to Cambridge development arc. It promised uh, a huge boost to the local economy, thousands of jobs and a million new homes. While the project's rail link is going ahead, the new road is in doubt. Campaigners opposed to the route, which they say will cut through communities and countryside, have taken their fight to Westminster today. This report is from our political correspondent, Ben Schofield. A campaign to save the countryside arriving in the big city. But will beating the expressway be child's play? My name is Charlotte and I am five years old. I'm Bella, I'm ten years old. I don't want the expressway because it is cutting down the trees and destroying bird habitat. I'm Ava and I'm ten years old. It will bring chaos, lots of people and it will destroy our nature and our countryside. It's going to create pollution and damage our futures. These girls and their mums charged with handing a near 15,000 strong petition into Downing Street. There have been a lot of rumours that the expressway is going to be cancelled, um, but nothing's been officially announced. So we're going to keep fighting until it is. But it's not just about the road, it's about the one million houses planned for Oxford to Cambridge Arc as well, which is a massive, massively overinflated target. The expressway and an accompanying rail link designed to unlock land for house building, new homes and jobs creating an economic powerhouse. But while the rail link is in vogue, MPs today also backed the case to ditch the expressway. It's a bad scheme and there are better ways uh, of spending much less money to improve uh, the economic activity in the area, um, but also to improve transport connectivity. Do you fear that the region won't be able to capitalise on the economic potential that the Oxford to Cambridge Arc presents without the expressway? That it'll be a, a watered-down proposal, essentially? No, I don't, because I think actually people sitting in traffic jams is exactly the kind of thing that will mean we won't have economic success in future. The last thing Cambridge needs is more cars coming into the city. Not everyone is anti-road. Some hauliers say the link is needed. But could we get the same economic benefit without it? Lord Adonis chaired the National Infrastructure Commission when it put forward the road and rail scheme. He now recommends full steam ahead for rail and the back burner for the road. I think if we can get state-of-the-art rail connectivity, including high-capacity, frequent and fast trains serving all of the principal towns between Cambridge, Milton Keynes and Oxford, then I think it might be possible to do without an actual new expressway. The Transport Secretary has already said he doesn't believe the case for the road stacks up. Officially, the scheme is being reviewed before any more decisions are made. Ben's in Westminster now. So, um, Ben, when will we know what is happening with this road? Oh, well, Amelia, they say that the key to a good campaign is to make it short and winnable. And it does appear as if the campaigners will get their way. There's not a soul I speak to here who thinks the expressway will go ahead. When will we get official confirmation of that? Well, the Department for Transport say they'll announce the decision in due course. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, was asked about it at PMQs a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he would only say that uh, we'd have to wait until the budget, and that is due on March the 11th. And Ben, we've had uh, an update, some news uh, tonight, I think, on the Ely Junction. Yes, this came out of the uh, Transport for East uh, conference today uh, in Ipswich. Staggering rising costs to the Ely Junction improvements from £25 million to £400 million. Uh, that's at the cost of unblocking this huge bottleneck uh, between uh, Ely and Kings Lynn and Norwich and Cambridge. If it was unblocked, it would uh, mean more passenger services and better freight services. So campaigners say the new price tag is worth it. Thanks, Ben. There have been some disappointing figures for Kettering 